Okay, here we have another example. I just wanted to do one more of that same type so that we could see what was going on there. This one says this function is one to one. Find the inverse and check your answer, which we would have to do the composition function to do that. And we're not going to go that far. State the domain and find its range using the inverse function. We're just going to go ahead and do both of them. All right, so first things first, I need to rewrite my function as y equals 2x minus 3 over x plus 4. And now, I mean, because all I did was just replace f of x with y. That's what it is. But now I can use the idea of inverses because we switch out the x and the y places. So y becomes x and x becomes y. This time, though, I'm actually going to have two y's over here because I had two x's. So we're going to have y in two different places. Now this is the inverse, but we are actually going to finish, you know, um, cleaning it up and, and put it in the proper form. So I'm going to multiply both sides by y plus 4 to get rid of it in that denominator. And then distributing our x, we get xy plus 4x equals 2y minus 3. Now we're solving for y, but they're separated. So we're going to move everything with y's to the left, everything without to the right. So that'll give us xy minus 2y equals negative 3 minus 4x. Now here's where our problem is. We're supposed to be solving for y, but we have y in two different places, and we cannot combine these terms. They are not alike. But we can factor that y out. This would be the same thing as saying y times x minus 2 equals negative 3 minus 4x. And now we can divide both sides by x minus 2 to get y equals negative 3 minus 4x over x minus 2. Now we don't want to leave this notation because we want to make sure and put it in the proper notation. So this would be the inverse function of x is negative 3 minus 4x over x minus 2. All right, the last thing we have to do now is talk about our domain and our ranges. I'm just going to go ahead and do both to give us the practice. So for our original function and our inverse, we're going to do both. The original function here is rational, so we would have to set that denominator equal to zero and solve to find the hole in the domain. So that tells us our range here would be the set of all x's such that x cannot be a negative 4. For the inverse function, we'd have to do the same thing. Set our denominator equal to zero and solve for the hole. So we would have the set of all x's such that x cannot be a 2. Now for the ranges, we use the idea of inverses. The domain or the x's in the original switch places and become the y's in the inverse function. So our range would be the set of all y's such that y cannot be negative 4. And then vice versa. If we were a y in the original function, that became an x in the inverse. So our range here would be the set of all y's such that y cannot be a 2. And again, if we wanted to look at asymptotes, we could verify that. This function has the same power on top and bottom. So that tells us that we would have a horizontal asymptote at the ratio of those coefficients, 2 over 1. Well, a horizontal asymptote is going to be a hole in the range, in the y values. So that absolutely matches up. In our inverse function, again, our powers are the same on top and bottom. So we would look at the ratio of coefficients. So we would have a horizontal at negative 4 over 1 which again, it, we can verify or double check ourselves on that.